Yes, I just I think I get a, percent, a, a little bit of a sense of the world without humans, beyond the human world. And that's why it's a bit scary sometimes. So. Bunny. Make you an offering, Bunny. An offering of the offering. There's all kinds, all kinds of things there for you. Look. Yes. You'll have to see if they're edible. Anyway, there they go. Right. The dragon. The little dragon has his flower offering. Just come down to Ever I Wood to release another mouse. This is where we were yesterday, it's where I shot the bluebells and stuff. So this used to be our land. Have I got fucking chocolate on my mouth? I have. Oh well. This used to be our land. But we swapped it. Um, this field is actually <coughs> over the road. Um, so we swapped it for a field next to us. So we kind of consolidated our land. The only shame was losing this um, lovely little bluebell wood. But I, I, I still come here a little bit um, to check it out and stuff. And um, I, I, call it, I call it ever I would because I would. Um, forever. Um, anyway, like over there, you see what well, the fields that we call Mordor, that's just kind of like monoculture. Um, and so, Ever I Wood is a little coppice, really. Um, and, and there's a bigger wood, like further along the winding brook here. <coughs> um, which, like most of the woods around here, is is private. It's just for like hunting and stuff. Although there's a public way that goes through it. Um, I think I haven't done a lot of exploring there. Anyway, um, what's cool about 
this, like, is that we made a little victory because we kind of, one of the first things we did, or I did when I got here, um, we started rewilding this little patch, um, so kind of like extending the reach of ever I would. And when we um, swapped this field, so when it went back to its, uh, or so, so when it went to its new owner, who's our other neighbour, he didn't, we were worried that he might try and reclaim this bit that we'd try, that we'd claimed back for the wild, but he hasn't, so this is like a, a successful little bit of rewilding. It's not our land anymore, but we, uh, we had an effect, planted a bunch of trees, and then basically the river people came last year and did a little bit of work um, protecting the river, like putting barbed wire fences up to stop the cows and stuff. Uh, so all this, all these like alder trees and we planted some beech and birch and other bits and bobs. Um, this is all like, all anti-Mordor rewilding stuff. And there, there was a nice hedge on the other side there, but Mordor just fucking come and cut that shit down because it casts a little bit of shade on a little bit of their field, you know, it's that kind of logic, so-called, that, that runs all of this kind of shit. Anyway, just wanted to show you that, this ever I would. So here's the old field. Let me just get all this barbed wire. And then that's the... So when they came to um, fence off Winding Brook, they also fenced off this whole area, which is nice. They must have seen what we were trying to do and they kept the fence going there. So all of that bit is rewilding naturally. Um, so that's cool. There's still this little bit of no man's land between us. It would be nice to have a proper little wildlife corridor, you know, following the brook. Um, but there's this patch of no man's land that we're in now. We can't do anything about those guys apart from wait for their stupid way of looking at the world to be proved false and not a very happy thing blackbird caught itself on the barbed wire so there we go So that's ever I would over there. This is a winding brook going here and we're on our land now. Oh, this is the field it's called Golden Bottom. Can't see it now but in a summer um, you get lovely goldeny red colour from all the wildflowers and things. And here along the bottom Along the edge of Winding Brook, we planted a bunch of beech trees and things, um, and so we should hopefully thicken up the corridor there. And we're going to plant. Uh, we're planting a, a nut walk, so a kind of hazelnut corridor around around the limits of um, these bottom, these lower fields. But it's not um, it's not here yet. And that little sort of stand of trees is doesn't belong to us, but apparently the guy is a member of the um, like the bird people, the bird 
preservation people. Um, so he should hopefully keep those trees there. That's mistletoe in the poplar. I don't know if you can see the colours very well, but the poplar flowers have this sort of goldy red. Sometimes they look really red uh, when the sun's out and the sun's on them. There's poplar trees and some pines and the crows and the buzzards like those pines there. And then our house is uh, up on the hill there, but it's hidden from view at the moment. Seven hectares we've got. Seven hectares. Hectares. I think that's roughly 15, 15 to 20 acres, something like that. So not an insubstantial plot like a small farm, really. Um, and most of the land is pretty uh, rough like this. You see there's a lot of rush, the field to damp, um, wet. So it's not particularly like, well, it's not good quality agricultural land or anything like that, but that's good. Uh, we have to be a bit careful with the horses, um, keep them off the fields in, in winter and stuff until it gets a little bit drier or they just destroy them. Um, Someone digging down in there. Don't know who that is. Where are we? Well, some some diggings. Might be wild boar. They come through apparently every now and then. Though I've never seen them. Get a lot of deer and they cause problems with young trees and stuff because they love to itch their horns. This is a little pond. Um, so the, the brook is there behind and, and this is a little pond, we call Adam's Pond because after we had it dug I got naked and sat in it and so he called it Adam's Pond um, and that's, that's what started, uh, we have a vaguely kind of Eden themed uh, thing going on, we've got Adam's Field, Eve's Field and uh, Samael and Lilith have fields as well, so you know, we try to represent uh, the bigger picture, so to speak. Um, this behind us, this used to be one of our fields as well, but we swapped that for the field with the ruin in it, or part of the field with the ruin in. Um, and uh, again, that, that's a nice field, but uh, better to have, you know, the, 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 the I mean, the, the, the ruin field is part of our, would have been part of the old farm, um, so it would have been stranger not to, to, not to have the bit that's like right next to us. Hello horsey washies, young flam, having a sniff. She thinks there might still be some food, but I was just carrying a mouse in that bag. Anyway, so there's a bit of an overview, and I'm walking up now towards the house. It's my birthday, by the way. I've been 43 years of age. Uh, normally it's nice and sunny, um, but it's not a bad day. April the 8th. Uh, in fact, it's kind of nice that it's not too hot. Uh, it's lovely this time of year, but you start to also feel how uh, how it won't be long till it's too too hot. Bit fucking Goldilocks. It's just really, there's just this small part of the year that we really like. It's a circle of white poplar trees that I planted. We call that the men's circle. There's 12 white poplar trees. A couple of years ago I planted them. And then over in Eve's field there's the woman's circle as we call it. Don't know why we went with that, but that's well that was kind of her idea and this one was my idea, so there they are men and women. 
Um, the one over there has 21 birch, white birch trees. Right, and now I'm at the crossroads and I'll stop filming. This is a kind of centre of our land. So we've got the fields that have come from down the hill, down behind me, and that goes down to the brook. And then uh, down there, that's Silver Willow Hollow Way, we call it. Um, that's going north towards the wood where I just come from. That's south. Uh, the na the neighbour that we swap fields with is over there. Um, this is the darkening green. This is uh, anyway. I'll, I'll I'll do a map and show you, but basically that's west and that's where I'm heading now. Back up to the house. Not bad, really, is it? Just been getting a bunch of nettles. This is a patch beside the house we call the snake garden because uh, we're digging a pond and started making a big snaky sort of mound uh, there and I, I want to make a little place for growing mushrooms at the back there. Um, but you know, it's covered in nettles and, well, some forget-me-nots and brambles and that's the willow fence I was working on. Um, so yeah, I mean this place is is all a bit it's all a bit much um, for us. So we we can't really keep everything, um, you know, proper country garden style. I guess this is a proper country garden. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like brambles and nettles and all sorts of stuff going on. And that's all I was going to say is like I used to get a bit kind of an annoyed that we spread ourselves so thinly because you know we're doing stuff all over the these seven hectares and it would have been in some ways it would have been much more sensible just to concentrate on a small little area at a time and get it weed free and sort of complete um, before moving on to other places but that's not how she works it's not really how I work and it's not how this place works so instead what's gonna what's happened is we've sort of sketched out the kind of the rough the rough structure the actual real structure in terms of um, little paths around the house and all of those kind of things needs putting in um, really still but but the rough things there we've sketched it out and it's gonna take us years and years to uh, kind of fill it in and, and get the picture really uh, neat and kind of living. I'm just going to show you the drawing that I did just before I get on with lunch, which I must do now. This is the drawing I did this morning. Kind of twin dragons, both united and divided around a lightning strike. I've mostly been writing this year but I'm just having a little phase of drawing and uh, I really like drawing and that's what I'll spend most of my time doing once I've got the attic upstairs finished, sort myself out a proper desk and things and I can't wait for that and then I'm going to really start trying to get some books and things together, that's what I really want to do, I, re I really love books, um, illustrated books particularly, um, illuminated. So I'll still, yeah, so that's my that's my plan. Stick out all of this, or try not to get overwhelmed by how much of it there is, because there's a lot. And uh, and 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 get a bunch of stuff done before I get too fucking old. Um, before we get too fucking old. Um, it's also the eclipse in America today. I hope it goes kind of crazy, but good crazy, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I guess it will mean different things to different people. Um, I was looking when I'll get to see one. The last one I really remember was like, I think it was around the millennium at some point. Uh, I remember Ken Kesey and that lockdown in. 
Cornwall at the Minac Theatre trying to get the clouds out of the way and not really succeeding. And I went down to the beach at Bournemouth uh, and it was cloudy. Um, but there's one going to be visible here almost total in 2026. Um, so that's pretty cool. Looking forward to that. Um, but then the, the next the chance for really seeing totality that's going to be here is 2081. So that I'll be a hundred then, but I would really, really like to uh, to see that. Um, it's quite un unlikely that I'll reach a hundred. No one in my family that I'm aware of has. Um, but I'd like to. I'd like to stay with you guys until 2081 and like see that total eclipse, and then I'll and then you know that would be me done. That's my plan at the moment. Oh, that's my plan. <laughs> Richness. All riches are appropriated from nature. Whatever I can't go against is a supernatural law. Fingers of light stroking tree fur. Reflection on the mystery is pause. Playing steam across the banjo strings of nothing. Everything green is edible. Bluetooth. If your tooth is blue. The bumblebee's pestle and mortar is bat flight of swallow day. Fishing for nonsense with a man called Rodney. My eyes bounced off the back of two tiny green beetles. Unfolded wild strawberries of willpower. The freedom to eat only in what one doth disgorge. Beneath the belly feathers of the sparrows. This fingerprint again and again and again. The pickaxe of difference digs holes of Cosmic deference. I lay down in the fields in a clover sewn suit. Shoes made of old boats and an astronaut's bubble of clay. The ivy flecked blackbird bubble of don't shout. The nearly there, the nearly thereness of oh so far away. The roaring flame of mine own absence. Forgetful head of the fruitiest clan. Bunny salad. Delivered on time. Aeons ago. Aeons ago go. Canst thou see it's raining now? What a glorious, tiny little shower of almost gone. Standard, lazy, good spring dish. White rice, nettles, potato. Forgetful head of the fruitiest clam. The forgetful head of the fruitiest clan. I dreamed a double eclipse this morning, by the way. Uh, first I thought I was watching the eclipse that's happening today and then uh, looking at the sky over the ocean and towards uh, the left there was something more like the moon um, with something rolling across it but but leaving um, blue and then on the right there was something more like the sun with something rolling across it at perhaps a slightly different pace and uh, leaving it black it was very beautiful. Um, it was particularly the uh, th 
the, the motion that, that struck me, the, the way things rolled. Often enough, I dream of a world with two sons. I think my wife is there. Happy birthday. She's completely, a completely liberated soul in the world with two sons. And I sometimes panic because I think when I'm there I have to get back to this one. But she knows how to soothe me whichever, in whichever world she is. Bless you, my sweetheart. I love you. Are you coming out, Benny? Come on, let's go. Come and have a little bit of time out before evening come. Boonie. Come on, Boons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just rained. But now the sun's come out. So why don't you? Plenty more to eat out here, you see. Oh, Booney! Perhaps you can't see this very well, but I just wanted to document it as an example of, of what random little twats mice are. <clears throat> um, they've come and they've just like, ra they've just bitten out some of these little nodules out, out of our nice green bath mat. Why? Why have they done that? There's absolutely no sense to it. They haven't used it for anything. They've just bitten them out and left them there. And that's one of the reasons why mice are such twats. They just come along and they'll just take some bites out your granddad's old jumper uh, and, and they'll just randomly have little pisses and, and shits on your stuff. And uh, we don't we don't kill them or anything, you know, but we, 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 we trap them in humane traps and, and take them far away, but um, but we've been a bit slack on it recently and, 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 and they've just begun to really annoy me. When they do little things like this, it's just like, you're just being a random little twat, you know, and, um, and it's just annoying and, and now I'm going to try and pick you and all your friends up and, and take you far away from here and until you learn to behave yourselves like um like like decent little house, house guests oh okay Narrative Tiv Block versus Spice Chicken and Go Bang A Twixt My Obvious Revelations Running in the field without me laces tied just for the fun of the one of me healing Explanation my inexpressible feeling it's not confusion if you colour one bit green. Stamping on the crunchy things makes sounds you cannot hear. Were you talking to me? Assume nothing. And then we understand each other perfectly. For it's rattling all over the spice rack and batting in every bird wing. <laughs> so very many ways to be helpful. <laughs> I'm for ship's rope. Let me hang things, get up. So the theory behind such things 
is itself nonsense. And if you want some tips on how to practice it, I would say it's, it's nonsense. Um, when you don't know what you're feeling, try doing something like that. <sighs> Works best in distress. Uh, perhaps not of the despairing sort, but what's that really? Fundamental layers of clunking down below with a little sprinkle of fucking who knows what on top. You see? And afterwards... Uh, because before... And so thus, and then, therefore. The means of production are seizure. Are. Return to one's desk or other safe space. Breathe and then breathe and then even <sighs> breathe and then see even then even then even then fever. Even and 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 proven and coven and arven and asven and seven and teven and uven and woven and woven and soven and even and zeven. Something's changed. You can tell, can't you? Because everything seems the same. <coughs> Perhaps it was then that it changed, you know? Then. Then, I mean, then, you know, when that thing happened. I think it must have been then. You can tell that it's changed because it all seems the same. Also very ordinary. Oh, yeah, so very ordinary. Precisely what we'd be. Isn't it? Really. <laughs> I do apologise. Normal service rules, you. Here's how I make my coffee in the morning. That works, you know? Before that wakes me up, see? Wakes me up before it wakes me up. I'm just trying to think of um, the poem I'm going to write this morning, which is going to be a one sentence description of the kind of p pornography I would like to see more of in the world. I think it's going to be something like. 
sophisticated ladies in tight trousers bending over to stroke bunny rabbits, telling them they're adorable in high-pitched voices, something like that. Sophisticated ladies in tight trousers bending over to stroke bunny rabbits while telling them they're adorable in high-pitched voices. Sophisticated ladies in tight trousers bending over to stroke bunny rabbits while telling them they're adorable in high-pitched voices. The tension is where it's at. Like, none of this exists and I, I really don't want to slight that. Um, People don't realise how important it is, even though, I mean, how important it could be to them, even though it doesn't make any difference to, uh, to un understand viscerally as great as time is, you know, as unimaginable as for instance, evolutionary time is, or, or, or cosmic time, billions and billions of years. Time that extends back beyond, you know, the human being even being there, here, beyond monkeys, beyond life as we know it. It just, it just becomes nothing, that's how it feels, I mean, it, it feels like a, it becomes infinitesimally small, and then it becomes nothing, all that is, it, it is all that is um, eternity. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to talk about this stuff particularly at the moment. And I, I sort of realise and recognise now why why people don't talk about it more and why people kind of laugh it off a bit nowadays. And so I, think, I don't know anyway. It's just that I do think of it. I do know it is the truth. Somehow it's the tension between that and this, um, and I'm looking at my wife and the horses and thinking what a shame it would be um, if she was just alone here and, and struggling um, in the mud. And you know, since since I turned up, things got better for me. And, after a little bit of up and down and things got better and easier for her and now there's like flowers everywhere and we sort of I mean she knows what I think and I, and I, and I try to talk to her about it but it helps me put my thoughts in order I know they don't seem particularly ordered at the moment um, I don't want to learn them like some kind of um, thing I can recite, you know, like, a, like an argument I can make. I prefer it. I prefer to be on it when I'm on it and not when I'm not, and uh, to say what I'm actually in touch with in the moment that I'm saying it, rather, rather than just reciting something I have known to be, or 
something like that. I said something about the absurd. Uh, we, we, we were driving into town, and we were just about to. We were stopping off at the graveyard to um, get some to check the bins for, for flowers. We've got loads of flowers from various cemeteries that people um, chuck in the bins when they remind them too much of death or something. Anyway, when they start looking too betrayed, I say. And um, this cemetery is next to somewhere called like a Boulodrome or something like that. And I was like, what's a Boulodrome? And she's like, it's a place where old men roll balls across the floor. Um, in other words, it's a, it's a bowls pitch. Um, but maybe with a bit of an arena around it and she was just like that, it's absurd and I was just like, darling everything is equally absurd, that's what absurd means, you know we're just as absurd as bowls you and I and she was just like, no it's not gardening's mean something gardening's better than bowls And I'm not going to argue with that, basically. Gardening's better than bowls. But there's, there's something... I don't know. I, I, I say there's a price to pay. Saying something as simple as gardening's better than bowls. And, um... And it, it, it might be right saying that, but I can't help but feel it's it's part of what I have felt as, as great pain, as, as wrong, as cosmically wrong, as the, the wrongness of of existence. Um, I don't know. It's bizarre. But that's all I wanted to say is, is it's, it's in the contradiction somehow for me more than it is in the negation um, and more than it would be in the affirmation. It's in the contradiction. And that's a kind of weird place to be, but um, that's where I'm at. I, that, that's what my and sign means to me somehow um, and whether or not it's contradiction all the kind different kinds of contradiction it is whether or not it's paradox blah blah those are all things that I will try to sort out um, but I know that like in terms of how it's lived and in terms of how it feels feel very extreme basically but it's all but it it's all about relaxing I suppose I mean if you don't have if you don't have a real tension there then you don't really have anything to relax in or about um, but yeah it's not easy anyway but it's it is it is what it is. What all the, what all this is. I mean, it, I guess it's as close as I come to touching some kind of wildness at the heart of life, um, with words and with with thought and uh, with vision and with uh, all of that somewhere. In here. Anyway, I'll have to do some non-talk. A nice moth. You might be able to hear the frogs just starting to croak a bit. And the wisteria is on the way. I 
I've been around very many times, some part of me has been around many, many times. And uh, that bit of me is pretty fucking tired somehow. Um, and it's kind of all right with the idea of uh, going to fucking sleep. Uh, I, I think it's sleep is maybe like other people's joy rides or something. I don't fucking know. Still working on them stones. I was just looking at this cherry tree, which uh, which I look at quite a lot at this time of year. Uh, the wife was saying it's today. I said something about how much I liked it, and she said she was glad that I'd said that because she'd just been reading a book by a famous garden designer. I forget the fellow's name, something to do with Great Dixter. And he was bad-mouthing this particular cherry blossom tree, um, saying that it was wrong, basically. The, uh, the, um, the combination of the kind of bronzy leaves with the light pink flowers. Um, and in fact, when we, when we were buying a cherry tree for the yard here, this wasn't the, the one we actually had in mind, but I really like it. Um, and I think it's lovely, and uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you get this light pink and um, bronze, but you can see there's also some contrast, you get a bunch of blackness in there as well. Anyway, it's really interesting tree. Um, and for me it goes really, really well with the blue of the sky. Um, probably as well the stone and stuff um, of the house. But I was, I just said, you know, to her, then just then, maybe it could be considered wrong if it wasn't for the blue of the sky somehow. Um, I guess that's balancing the pink and, the, and then the kind of orangey bronze is kind of uh, shifted somehow. I think that's, if, if I'm wrong, which I surely am, um, it doesn't matter because there's something like that blue sky that makes it all right. Uh, because I do feel, I do feel profoundly wrong sometimes. Um, and there's, but there's something like that blue sky that offsets it all, that makes it all right. One thing I feel like I should say is, is that the, uh, it's not that kind of, it's a necessary wrong somehow, right? So it's not like the blue sky makes it all right, as in, you know, it makes it totally insignificant or it makes it not matter or it's like, you know, It works with the blue sky somehow. Um, right kind of wrong. Anyway, here I am going to... This is a pond. You would probably think you could even fucking walk on it. Um, but you can't, it's just completely weedy duped. So I'm going to rake this to the sides to give any... Uh, Newts and dragonfly larvae and whoever else a chance to get out of it before we take it to the garden and, and use it to um, uh, cover some potatoes. I think that's what this is going to be for. One of my absolute favourite creatures, a newt.
absolutely, absolutely love it. Can we get a good look at you, sir? Nice big newt with an orange belly. Let's have a look underneath, Pete, huh? Eh. Here's a different fella there, going back in. I'm sorry for the disturbance guys, but I have to say, it's quite a show. Reminds me very much of the good old days. Okay, that's going to have to do for now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave a bunch of that stuff over there anyway. That's the kind of the deep end and, and this is the shallow of it. So now there's uh, a bit more kind of equilibrium. It's not just completely overwhelmed by this stuff. I've piled up in these in these places. But yeah, nice pond. Gunner coming up over there. That's new. Wasn't that easy? Wife was like, oh yeah, that's a lovely relaxing job. It might be now, it wasn't, getting that stuff up onto the side. Bloody monstrous. Anyway. Just so you know, one of the things that living in this way entails is a lot of shit. Um, each horse makes pretty much a wheelbarrow of shit per day. And I, I once did a, an approximate calculation and that works out about a ton of shit every week. Literally a ton of shit we're moving every week. Um, so yeah, don't get depressed about it. It's a crop. Okay. Guy, I've, I'll, I'll not talk more about shit now, but it's... Something of great value to me, I suppose. If it wasn't for farts, there wouldn't be all this speaking, would there, for a start? And, um... There might be some shit things about speaking, but there's some good stuff about it, too. Alright, bye. Idea for a film... Basically, insects eating plants and stuff. Um... And just, like... Screams, a cacophony of, of, of screams um, with insects eating plants and stuff, and snails like just slithering up wooden posts and just like great loud monster noises. And then juxtapose it with like really, really busy places with quiet people just sitting there. Um, and even, even like, really, really busy in a bad way. Like bang-bang places with quiet people just sitting there. 
and then quiet places with insects eating leaves and just screams and screams and screams. It's an idea for a quick river little film. Third element, I didn't realise, but I was already thinking about it. That's like stand up comedians in forests, like just doing telling jokes to birds basically. Um, which is something I do sometimes, just get up early and go out when all the birds are singing and tell them some jokes. Basically none of them get it, apart from Woodpecker. Woodpecker um, gets it, and also robins know how to laugh. They like a little giggle. Um, but yeah, so, so that's the third element. Um, Stand-up comedians in the middle of nowhere telling jokes to, you know, no, no one, as in, no one. Just recording, I've just heard Cuckoo and uh, I wonder if they might, if he might uh, pop up again, so I'm just going to keep recording while I prepare key shots. They've moved from uh, roughly south southwest, and I think they think they might be over in uh, the echoing green. Uh, hold on a minute. It was nine twenty. I first heard them, and I guess it's about. 9.30 now. They fucking, they fucking are always getting out of this. They have to do it because the spring grass is particularly rich and they turn into fat motherfuckers if we don't, for their own good, limit the speed, at least, of, of their grass munching. I'm just going to write in my cuckoo book, um, but when I heard it at 9.20, my head was going, All you need is love, because that's been happening this morning. Um, but I want to change it to, All you need is mud. Um, and actually, it was originally, All you need is like shit, or All you need is bum. Very quiet, I don't know if you can hear him. I think he might be over the southwest again. All you need is dung. I was thinking of the dung beetles. The dung beetles. Because you see, they, it's better if you get out early in the morning before the dung beetles have set to work. Uh, because they make picking up shit much more difficult because they basically fucking demolish it, turn it into mud. Um, don't normally wear my ring, wife's, wife's away so I'm wearing my ring. Um, yeah, so the dung battles, they spend all night rolling the sun across the sky, you see. And then as soon as the sun's shining down where it needs to, uh, which is always, you know, right here at Winding Brook, as soon as the sun is on us, then they come down out the sun and they throw themselves into the piles of poo-poo and, um, cuckoo, cuckoo, and they... They, they dive right to the bottom of the poo-poo pool and when they get to the bottom or, you know, it's like there's little fucking um, trails, you know, like when you're high and you move your hand and you see lots of little hands behind. That's what happens. They dive down into the bottom of the poo pool and then all their multiplications come up through the poo. <laughs> and uh, it fizzes into the earth, basically. It's like a 
not very slow volcano, but you know, from a certain perspective it's quite slow. Kind of inverse volcano, I suppose, like a, like a mountain returning to the earth, a mini mountain returning to the earth. Because yes, I mean, it's all well and good saying all you need is love, but what we really need is peace and, you know, love and hate go very well together, better than most people realise. So we do need some kind of great, dispassionate movement. Um, but also, I don't see why... why... Ecology can't be funny somehow. Oh yeah, that's my little flam. Ecology can't be funny. Could be funny, couldn't it, Flambo? So that's why I was thinking about oh, all you need is dung. Just because, you know, I mean, all, all these things really do come together. Whoa, Flambo. And we're very attached to certain things. And basically, I think the only way you can really... Like, I have this weird contradiction that I'm trying to live, which is between loving and being completely free to love, which means having a certain disdain for this place, this world, you people. Um, but that that's how... That's how the contradiction sort of resolves. It's like, how do you really love something if you're bound to love it? If, you're, if your love is... I won't say an animal love because animals are very pure and human beings are impure because, because we are... We're rendered impure by something. It's not that other things don't have it, it's that we can know it. Um, whereas they just are it. And actually, obviously, to really know anything, you, ha you do have to be it. Um, I'll tell you one thing, and that's like, I see goddess. Sam, is it you who's helping fucking Keyshot get out of his fucking fat mask? I see, I see the, I see goddess when I look at these horses, the mares, and particularly it was with um, the auntie, auntie Drakey, the big black void, our new forest pony, who refused to conceive our Moonin, who then became Flam. Though she still has some new Moonin. She's a, she turned black for a while after she was born completely flame ginger and now she's a kind of burnt chestnut. Anyway, Drakey's a bit left out because Gully, the mum mare, has supplements and just Drakey's a proper pony and she just loves to fucking eat. And old Bobby, the other pony, he's old so he gets supplement. Drakey doesn't get supplement. So the other day... She came in to the room where I was sorting out the supplements and no one else has allowed them but she kind of blocks the door, shoves her head in and I give her some supplement and she reminds me of the goddess, my goddess, because she's barren. Everything's, everything's nothing. I'm 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 more comfortable with these total contradictions now, and and the ways in which they do resolve. But for instance, there's there's a deeper layer of contradiction, which is that the contradiction remains and remains total, and that's in contradiction. So the contradiction is in contradiction with the way in which it 
resolves, and this I guess turns it into a paradox rather than a contradiction, which is that one thing is valued above the other. So nothing is valued, nothing is more important than everything. Um, and so being not from this world, being a stranger, being an allogen is my way of coming to, to truly l love it. Uh, I'll shut up now because these guys want to eat. That's what I'm going to write in my cuckoo book, something like that. But uh, this shows you part of my cuckoo practice, which is trying to get at the theme of my thought when, when cuckoos calling. Okay. There's lovely Jakey, the dragon in a in a in a mask, slam, key shot. Old Bobby, always a bit paranoid. This is Stargazes, formerly known as the Ruin Field. But uh, the Ruin Field was a bit too descriptive. Stargazes, because up there, roughly south, you get all sorts of lovely things in the sky at night. Swallows. First couple came back, arrived, on my birthday it was, won't be too long till there's a whole crew of them uh, zooming around the house and the yard, so I think it was 7th or 8th of April they came back and they got some places in, in the barns there, there might be three of them. This is how far I've got so far with the old uh, stones from the ruin. Quite far, but there's still some ways to go. Mi cuckoo, mi cuckoo, mi cuckoo. Mi ban 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 ban. Mi cuckoo working for this year. I'm not gonna say, just gonna show you that. I just went to try and find some rice for to add to my nettles and potatoes for lunch. Couldn't find any, so I had to go out and get this old bag that the fucking mice broke into. And now I'm having to sort through, sort through every grain, searching for mouse poo, just picking picking out the little mouse poos. I'm nearly done, but there's just a just a few still in there. Uh, yeah. Funny. I probably shouldn't worry. There's a vanishingly small quantity of mouse poo compared to rice. It's just, now I know they're in there. Um, I can't in, I can't, I can't eat it without trying to remove all the little black grains. Surprisingly fiddly. Or unsurprisingly, it's very fiddly. So here's one of the things I'm doing with the knots is, is I draw the knot in there and then I try and figure out um, which one it is. So I'm just having a look at this, it's obviously that comes undone straight away. And it's some kind of a one, two, three, four, five, six crossing knot. But um, I've got a feeling it might be composite. Um, it might be... Well, if it's six crossings, then it can only be the the triscal, um, and it looks a bit like like this projection added to this projection. But I'm, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to have a fiddle. Um, yeah, I'm I'm quite sure that's what it is. That it's a, actually a, a composite of um, two of the three crossing knots, and not one of the prime six knots. Not one of the um, oh, three prime um, six crossing knots that you can see there. I've still got to figure out how to 
see and tell the stuff. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of obvious for me just to look at, but uh, but um, but um, it's just looking lovely in the uh, late spring summer, late spring sunshine. Uh, the white poplars there, planted in a circle a couple of years ago now. Ah, oh, there's the willows I was beheading coming back to life. This one here is called Golden Sunshine. You can see why.